Hi, good morning everybody. Uh, so we will just start with a moment of silence. Hi, good morning. So again, everybody, very good to see you all. Uh, so many familiar faces, even they are very little, tiny, tiny, I recognize the name and faces. So wonderful to see you all. So today's uh, topic as part of uh, the Pith Instructions, um, it's helping others uh, through our meditation. So basically it's about being, how we can help other people through our practices and through our meditation. Um, so just to talk a little bit about helping others, I think uh, generally it seems like a very human thing for all of us to naturally uh, wanting to, to be helpful, uh, wanting to help. Uh, this is very much, I think, deep core inside as a human. We have this great, great quality uh, to help other people. So if you look about, you know, all the great masters and uh, all the uh, great teachers, yogis, uh, even wonderful, powerful people, politicians, not always all of them, but many of them, at least good intention they start with, many great leaders of the world. And um, also in a very basic sense of as a human, you know, parents just, we are, we are ready to give ourselves away to our children. We would do anything for our children. And also as a parent, as a children, as growing aging parents, we wanted to be uh, helpful, to be there. Not necessarily it looks like a, this, this part of the cycle is not always as much committed or as much engaged as much as the parents are engaged with the children, but at least the intention is there. People try hard, people try their best. So in a deep sense, the idea of helping others is very much in all of us. But what what is it make successful us to able to help other? And what is makes f f failure in order not to help others? I think in a way it's a very simple thing it comes down, really boils down to one single thing, which is the, the pain identity of oneself. 
we all intend well, we all start well, but some point in the journey, our pain identity manifests, began to interfere. So sometimes it makes things harder, complicated, more conflict. So, but there's no way we can avoid that identity to come up in the process of helping other people. Just, it's a natural thing. There's, there's no way we can do that because we are human beings. Uh, we can always do our best, but there's, that will always come up. So, and then the main question remains in the end, it's how much of that pain identity comes up in the process of helping others how well it comes out, how good it comes out, how open it comes out, how creatively it comes out, how uh, badly it comes out, how conflicting way it comes out, confused way it comes out. That remains a question, and I think it remains each situation, each, in each individual, in, even in each individual in the different situations, we do differently. Sometimes you might be very good in helping your family, but not the society. Sometimes you are very good in helping society, but not your family. Sometimes you are good at helping everybody, including yourself. You, I say, excluding yourself. So you are good at helping other people, helping families, but very bad in taking care of yourself. So we, we face these challenges so many different ways. So, so in the end, it is very much about balancing that. It's very much about balancing, constantly being aware of our pain identity when it manifests in the process of uh, social work, in, in the process of helping other people, in the process of helping loved ones, in the process of helping somebody you are personally, emotionally very involved and how much this pain identity comes out, how, how closely you're able to watch, aware, guide, prevent, you're able to do that. It comes, comes out of that. So I think in some way, you know, I just wanted to say that we, we, we all uh, trying to be aware of that. So I think it's just that awareness is fundamental, that awareness is really, really the main key to, to do that. So for example, in the, in the, in the teaching in general, like in, it says, uh, we say tampasum or jurasum, uh, jurasum, so three, the three excellency, uh, first is, uh, in the practices in our meditation, the three excellency or tambasum or jurasum. So first is the bodhicitta, the intention. Uh, second is the the awareness. So you begin with the intention, which is bodhicitta, altruistic mind, inspiration, and you do your meditation with not conceptualizing or not involving with the pain identity, but doing it with as much as awareness as possible during your process of meditation. And in the end, it's sealed with a dedication. So starting with the bodhicitta, a practice of aspiration, uh, continuing with with the awareness of self-awareness, with awareness, uh, so that not it, it does not get conceptualized, does not get identified with the pain and ego, but or at least not much, or at least if there is, is watched, is guided, rather than uh, totally getting involved and lost into it, not able even able to be aware of it, not like that. In the end sealed with the dedication. So whenever we do meditation with these three principles, then our meditation becomes um, very effective 
uh, it becomes it gets saved. That means it's harder to uh, destroy by other situations. Like for example, it said that uh, one strong rage of anger can destroy a years of meditation. This is what it says teaching. I'm not personal opinion or anything like that, but this is how it said. So one strong rage of anger can destroy years of meditation, merit of years of meditation, unless it is sealed by the three excellencies, bodhicitta, awareness, dedication. And so then the practice becomes very, very beneficial and helpful to others. So, so that's a very general principle, I think. So um, what I'm trying to say here is now how our meditation can be helpful to others. Um, we are all practitioners, we all practice, we all do our best, we all face challenges, we all try to help each other. It's a journey that we are all in. And uh, so there's a three things, I think, in a, in a very simple, one. Another, another way to frame it will be three simple things. Any time you do meditation, or any time in a way you do, you do anything in your life, and uh, any time when you, when you really have an intention to help some other people, others, that you are, you are, your intent is to help. You're trying to do something in order to help other people. You are, you are wanting to help your community. You are wanting to help your family. You are wanting to help your aging parents. You are trying to help your growing child. You are trying to guide your uh, confused teenage, you know. So whatever you're trying to do, first thing to watch very carefully inside oneself is the motivation. The, the, the who is trying to help? If I'm trying to, you know, I can give, clearly give an example of uh, being a father, I'm very lucky to be that, being a father. And uh, children is, I think, is very, very important. And uh, we, it's, it's a place where we really kind of let go ourselves. We, very strong place where you let go of yourself. That's what, you know, it's for telling and me, it's like singing, it's like that. Uh, where all um, uh, my schedules, my work, her schools, everything is around, surrounded by decisions that are made around, around his school. So his school is the center place. And we were able to do that because that's our, our children. Because you, you let go of all of your things in order to make a priority of another person, which is your child. And, and we, you know, as a practitioner, we hope not only is a child, you extend that with your husband, your wife, your family, your sangha, your community, uh, more in a larger sense of even people you don't know, and a larger sense of in a, a globally, you know, like a, and in a Buddhism it says countless sentient beings, uh, the bodhicitta to countless sentient beings, which is big project, um, we, which we always trying to do, but there's not really a so deep sense of personal feeling like that, but we try our practice to do that. So the first thing is the intention. Who is who is trying to help someone? So I, I would, this particular moment, I would ask everybody, all of you, including myself, that what is that you are trying to help? Who you are trying to help through your meditation, through your service, through your action? Who is that person? I gave the long list for many people, but that's not the list that you have, right? Or that's not the list that I have. This particular moment in my life, I have a specific things that I really trying to help. And through my practice, through my intentions, through my service, through my 
times and hours that I spend, even including this Facebook Live. What is my motivation? I always say, I ask these questions from, am I doing this for myself, my ego? Looking, looking oh, I'm, I'm doing Facebook Live, and am I doing this for myself? I ask this question. Sometimes I, of course, there are moments of doubt. Maybe I, I don't need to do this. Then when I read the comments of people, people who are saying that, oh, this is exactly what I wanted to hear today. These are the things exactly what's happening these days in my life. You made my day. When I hear these comments, all of your comments, that is my fuel. That is my uh, life force. That is, that, that's what gives me energy. Saying, oh, of course, if it's that much people are getting help, even, even one person is getting help, that many people are getting help that way, then of course my motivation is to do it because of these comments, because I get feedback, because there are people getting help. Of course, then there are, there are always the people there who don't care about it, who might think this is a very strange thing to do. They look at their Facebook Live and say, what, what, guy, what this guy is talking about? Who is this guy? So, so anyway, that's not the point. It's not really, point is what people think or what people say is what you know and what you are doing, uh, what motivation is there. So checking the motivation. As Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change that you wanted to see in the world. So if something that you wanted to, you wanted to help somebody, but trying to be that quality a little bit. If you wanted to, uh, so you, if you want somebody to be happy, then be happy a little bit. If you wanted to, somebody to smile, then smile a little bit. If you want somebody to be kind, then be kind a little bit. If you, if you want somebody to be generous, then be generous a little bit. If you wanted to be someone to be a little bit more open, be open a little bit. If you want somebody to forgive you, then forgive others. If you want somebody to be not complain, then stop complaining about things in life. But being the change that you wanted to see in the world or you wanted to see in someone you wanted to see in your husband, wife, your brother, your child. A parent who is screaming at the child, requesting to have some peaceful moment. That doesn't sound the right kind of advice. The fact you're screaming, yelling, asking somebody to be quiet or be peaceful, that's not a good message. Or, or, or you're asking somebody, your partner, to be happy, but with a lot of complaint. Well, if you're complaining that much, if you're that much unhappy, and you're asking somebody to be happy, I don't know if it would really work. If you're asking somebody to forgive something, about something, and then you're not forgiving, somebody's unable to forgive. That will not work also. If you really, if you're able to forgive because somebody is not able to forgive, then somebody will forgive because you are able to forgive. So, some sense, checking your own motivation, what really in this relationship, in this process, in this meditation, in this practice of bodhicitta, we say, in a, that's the bodhicitta's definition. This bodhicitta, it's not about oneself. It's about other, but in order to help other, it is about oneself. Because you cannot be helpful unless you are helped. So the First one is really, I'm, what I'm saying here is encouraging everybody in particular situation in your life. I'm, I'm not talking general, I'm not talking 
theory principle, but I am talking a topic that we have decided to talk, but I am very much talking about a specific situation in your life. If what I'm saying, if you're able to hear it from your place, in your situation, in you, then these things might make sense a little bit. They might help. If you're listening to them as a Dharma teaching, as a theory, as, as, a, as a tradition, and it has not much to do with you or your situation this moment, and, uh, and maybe you are looking at this, oh yes, I, 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 this makes completely sense. My, really, my, my, my wife really needs to know this, or my husband really needs to listen to this. I wish she's here. I wish she's here. I wish these other people are here. They got to listen to this. No, you're wrong. If they are not here, they are not here. Who is here? You are here. Are you hearing it? Or you, someone wants to hear it, and as a result, you are not hearing it. That's not the right way of listening. So, be, be it. Be aware of that motivation. Self-awareness of meditation in process of helping other people. Second one, which is in, a th in the three excellency, I said the motivation also, like setting up clear motivation, who you are, be open, be kind, but then motivation is you're really trying to help somebody, not you're trying to build your ego, or you're not trying to make your pain identity stronger, or you're not, you're not trying to feed your pain identity who is hungry to be fed it in order to survive. Not that. And the last thing is, of course, is the action. If, if you are open, if your motivation is open, your action will be coming out of that openness and the power of that openness will able to see more widely, more clearly, more directly, more precisely, more to the point, whatever need to be seen in that particular moment, situation in a life. Rather than pain, identity has planned something which not, does not correspond at all to that moment and situation. It's doing something completely different actions which has nothing to do with that, that moment in time, because it has already planned before. It's, therefore, it cannot see what is needed in the moment. So the power of openness is the ability to see full picture in the moment. Pa the weakness of pain identity is it's stuck in what it has planned and is not able to see what it actually it's needed. So, of course, it traces back to the sense of uh, who you are, being that change, checking the motivation. If these two are clear, more likely the action will come out right. At least whatever will come out, it will be better. So these three things, are, I think, is very important. How our, our meditation and our practices and also... Um, you know, not only just meditation as on cushion, but also uh, our actions of our life, you know, every given moment. For example, if you're having, if you have a little date with somebody or you have a meeting with somebody today, or, or you can look, you're meeting, you're meeting with somebody yesterday or you what happened? Maybe went really well. What, how you define well, you were present there, you were with them there, you appreciate the, the meeting, you, you look at, into their eyes, you made the connection. This is what they say, power of being present with somebody, gaze, eye connection, facial, conne facial connection. As you're looking at me, my movement, speed of my movement, my pose, my tone of voice, the meaning of words that I'm using, 
making connection to all these things, it was makes the connection powerful. So maybe what the, the meeting you had yesterday have all this quality, or meeting of yesterday did not have many of this quality, which means what? You were there, your body was there, but you really did not saw the person that well. You did not really have a moment looking into the person's eye. You did not really have the moment to felt the person. You don't not, there's not the moment when you really hear the person, or in, at least in, intention to hear and want, wanting to connect, it's not there. Therefore, the meeting went, did not go well. Okay, if the meeting did not go well, it did not go well, so what we can do? That, but what about meeting today, which is coming in the next hours, how are you going to make that meeting? That will, that will, that will require a presence of who you are, that will require some sense of openness, that will require some sense of awareness during the process, that will require some kind of a, a good uh, conclusion, closure, a nice hug, a warm goodbye. But we have this opportunity every given moment, but not necessarily we're able to use them, this beautiful moment that we have ability to connect with somebody, we are not able to take full advantage of that because we are lost into our pain identity, our stories of our pain. So, so meditation and social, socially helping somebody is not very different from that. So anyway, so that's one point. So there's a, a few other things, of course, as a practitioner, when we do meditation, um, one thing you can always do is when you are, for example, when you are feeling presence, or when you are trying to connect to source, when you are trying to do a refuge practice, co connecting with the refuge tree, the enlightened beings, when you are doing that, you imagine and feel your wife is doing that, your husband is doing that, your parents are doing that, your children is doing that, your community is participating with that, your friends are participating with that, that everybody that you know that you are connected, that you feel close to, they are all are with you. They are doing the same thing. Because if you're, if you're open, it's like a wire fire, right? You're using the password. It's like a Bluetooth. It's like an airdrop. You're connecting this information with everybody else. Everybody else, on everybody else's iPhone, it says, you're receiving a message. Do you want it to accept? You know how it happens in an airdrop. When you send a photo or something, it says, you're, somebody sending you a photo, somebody sending you a music, somebody saying hi to you. It's like that. So you, you send out these things and everybody's, everybody receives, regardless of they are aware or not, they receive. If they are open enough, they tune into it. If they are close, it's still there. They are benefiting from your intention of including in the practice, you are helping. Because sometimes we don't believe, we feel that help, helping somebody is you're trying to go somewhere, have long conversation, go through the conflict, make somebody agree with you, and when somebody agree with you, then you're helping. No. Helping has a in, incredible different faces. Even somebody disagrees with you, when you allow to them to disagree with you, you're helping them. When you, 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 you're acknowledging somebody's different opinion than what opinion you have, your ability to open to it, 
listen to it, you are helping them. They don't have to agree all the time. That's the power of openness. The, the weakness of pain identity, it needed to be part of the pain story. And when others become a part of your pain story, then you feel they are helping you. But that's not true. We help each other get trapped more or trapped longer into the pain. So anyway, so the first, this one particular principle that I'm saying is including others in your meditation. And then, of course, as we said, setting up intention of bodhicitta before, for every time when I do my Facebook Live, or any time during the retreats when I'm teaching, just for a, a minute, I'm trying to set my intention every time, every single time. May I be helpful today. May I be helpful to people who are listening to me. May I be helpful to people who are connected to these people. Just simply setting that intention, I feel that it's very simple intention, very simple uh, thought, just one minute, two minutes, makes a big differences in the practice. I feel that. And some, some people might think, well, it's just, it, well, it's just a, one simple thought, you know. And uh, I don't know how much this will be helpful. You're not getting up, you're not moving, you're not doing anything. Just intention. Of course I do a lot, but that's not the point. My, my intention before I do and what I'm doing has get influenced by my intention why I set it up before I do, I feel they have a great impact. So these little intentions, don't see them as a little thing. They are, they are a big thing. So I think, um, I'm not sure, I think I covered um, things that I wanted to share. And so maybe let's uh, do a short meditation. Um, I want uh, all of you just relax. That probably you are already relaxing. Don't try too hard to relax. Just just feel a comfortable position. And um, look at this meditation, a good example to see yourself. Are you present? Are you here with us? Are you listening? Are you hearing? Are you feeling? Are you connected? If the answer is yes, wonderful. If the answer is no, that's good too. That you know you have the answer. It's always good to have an answer for what it is, the true answer. It's, it's not so good not have an answer. So if either answer is good, of course one answer is a little better. And the second answer is also, in a way, I would probably I would not say better. I think both, both are equally good because whatever it is, it's good. So you, if you knew you are not connected, if we reminded you to connect, now you have a chance to come back and connect with us, to be with us. So the setting up that intention, who you are this moment, and why we are doing this meditation. Motivation, intention, is because I want each of you look at your meditation, not only meditation on a cushion, maybe whatever you are trying to do today, tomorrow, this week, next month, trying to help somebody, Are you, do you feel those quality in you? 
What, what are the changes that you're trying to bring in somebody, somewhere, somebody's life? Do you feel those changes in you? Do you feel open enough trying to ask for openness? Do you feel generous enough to feeling, um, uh, you know, do you feel generous enough to asking for somebody to be generous? Do you feel enough forgiving in your mo this moment that you're going to ask somebody else to, to forgive you? Just so looking at your in yourself. So just just feel that as I we play the Salve Mantra and feel this powerful mantra of clear light that so, so many of us so used to it now, feel this mantra is helping. And feel that we all are supporting each other. We have over 300 people present this moment. So you know that over 300 people are present this moment. We all, some of us, know each other, some of us don't know each other, but our clearly intention is to be open to all of you. My clearly intention is to open to all of you. And my prayer is that, as I said earlier, may this help you and everything what you do and who you're doing too, or every, every people who you are related to, that the the energy of help go through the chains of connections. When the connection stops, the flow stops. So be connected to each other and things you're doing in your life.
Okay. Thank you. Um, so, uh, how was the meditation? Any uh, clear sense of whatever you are planning to do next a few hours, few days, few weeks? Helping through your meditation, through your practice, through your service to others, through your intention to help your children, your aging parents, a friend who is going through a challenging moment, So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, also I wanted to thank you, everybody who is uh, making, the, uh, making comments and whatever you are feeling, you're experiencing, your questions. Uh, might not able to answer all the questions, but at least I know there are these, some, some of these questions are there. Then whenever I have opportunity, I will touch on that. And uh, also thank you for trusting and sharing with others. I think, um, one of the things that I notice is that whenever I'm traveling around, I meet a lot of people and they, some people say, oh, I've been, I listen to you every day. I listen to you every day. And um, so that makes me very happy. And uh, I met somebody by accident at the airport uh, who in, um, in Germany one time who, are, who was sitting there and listening something and then looking at me at the, entering at the gate and smiling at me, and uh, and that look maybe smiling at me or somebody else. Then then uh, she was smiling at me, and she came to me saying, "I'm listening to you right now." And uh, you're supposed to have a Facebook live tomorrow. <laughs> she reminded me. <laughs> so so I know like many of people, are, uh, you know, when you share that a lot of other people who also. They might never see me, see me, or, uh, but these some sometimes these little things always makes a little bit gives a little bit more hope, perspective, support in any anybody's life. That's all. That's wonderful. That's all. It makes me happy. So thank you very much, everybody. So I think uh, next week, Mariella, it's uh, next week we have another Facebook live, right? So. So please, if you can, give the date and time for the next week uh, schedule. Thank you.